welcome. Today we have our dear friends Danny Cohn and Jacob McLean, and we've invited them here today to do something that they do at their lovely shop, Cohn and Steiner, which I did a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. and it's called What's in Your Basket. So I did a tour of the shop and collected what I thought I would love to have. I'm doing that now in the gallery, but with art. So I've invited our friends here today to take a cruise through the show and to also pick out what their favorite art piece is and to tell us a little bit about it. But before we begin, which, so all of our friends know who you are, would you want to tell us a little bit about your lovely, lovely shop? Oh gosh. Um, <laughs> You're sure not awkward at all. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm Danny Cohn, owner of Cohn and Steiner, just down the street. And we are in Neighborhood Market, kind of a modern take on your general store, on a classic general store, modeled after my great-grandfather's store, of the same so name, cool. that was here in Seattle about 100 years ago. Would you say bodega? What's the difference between a bodega? I would say that. Okay. Because I was using that, and I didn't want to be naughty, but it's... No. It's, oh. Yeah. Okay. There's there, no reason. I guess so. If you say it's okay, then it's okay. <laughs> um, but let's not go by me. <laughs> Wonderful, <laughs> like accoutrement, food accoutrement, lovely artisan pro uh, products, mm -hmm. very thoughtfully curated and delightful. One of the reasons I picked to the gallery here because I saw that shop in this neighborhood and just fell in love. So I'm great. And we're so glad you're here. <laughs> and Jacob is the one that picks out many of those amazing things. He's always got things. <laughs> 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 So we have a wine at uh, your wine. You do partnerships at local mm -hmm. wineries. So we've had a you know few of those labels mm -hmm. here at our opening. So today I'm bringing you into my lair, into my artsy fartsy lair. Um, you you seen the show? You haven't seen the show? You're doing this cold. I'm going in cold. Going in cold. Fresh. Coming in hot. Going in cold. Um, so the show is Home and Away. It's comprised of eight artists, local, national, two locals, New York, Los Angeles. And the premise of the show and collecting these artists together was the idea, home and away. In order to truly come home, you have to leave home and come home transformed. Mm -hmm. So the idea of deconstructing stories to reconstruct stories in a more authentic way. So there's some literal connections. We've got collage, which is literally the deconstruction. We've got Colleen Monette, who creates new stories, vignettes, out of found objects. So all of the artists touch and theme and variation on that premise without being too hyper- Literal. Yeah, yeah, well, it's a time of transformation. Mm -hmm. The world's a little nutty right now. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. It's a thing that I think everybody can relate to. Yeah. What does home mean to you? What yeah. does away mean? And you're right, coming, you have to go away to really define what is home. Yeah, and, and who you are within your story. Mm -hmm. Part of the impetus was moved here from LA, mm -hmm. losing both my parents, I, and then opening this gallery in the middle of a pandemic. Cliff died. Right. But also, too, I. I realized I was walking around this world with borrowed stories hmm. and I was tired of borrowed stories so I'm like burn it to the ground let's rebuild new story right. so that was so this is an all I'm not a creepy narcissist and this is like <laughs> my, but I love the idea of cliff diving and transformations yeah so the best transformations arrive right? yep <laughs> yep so all the artists as I said touch on theme I have my interpretation I will not voice my interpretation on you so I would love for you to walk okay. around and tell the peruse questions, ask, um, <laughs> ask, and uh, then we can determine which piece you would love to take home with you. Okay, I'm excited. Tension build. <laughs> 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 I was for his work for about ten years, and when I found, literally found out, like, he, wait, what, what piece here? And then I heard he was doing a studio uh, sale, so I bolted over. There. He oh, does wow. beautiful collage work, painting, sculpture. But he also has a, a, an idea of like art should be, it shouldn't be in a pristine place, it should be able to be shared. So he created these. These are photo transfers, which is not the right word. Toner transfers. Toner transfers. Toner transfers. And the yeah, idea, they're, they're bits and pieces of his work, drawings that he made during, you know, COVID for photographs that he made at the residency. So this, as his wife said, is sort of like a little retrospect of his work. Mm -hmm. So he made these very accessible so everyone mm -hmm. would have sort of democratizing the process, sort of beyond mm -hmm. sort of the pristine white walls, white key with a gallery. So that's, these I are Robert's. 
that they're on, I mean, it looks like tiles. So it's, um, no, it's not. What is that? It's, it's, press, it. it's like press board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then court. So it's kind of what it calls them mats. So mm -hmm. in theory, they're functional, but I think that, you know, one can do whatever one wants with them. And I don't think he has any restrictions in terms of. But it's so great. Yeah. I mean, that is, talk about making art accessible. Yeah, that was totally so You don't have a huge wall to put this finely yeah. framed something, but you love that. You love that. You want to take and it's really cool because you resonate it. with the story. Yeah. And what, you know, that aspect. I mean, I love mm -hmm. these, these photographs. He said he creates these. Because uh, I was like, is that part of a building? Because you will mm. see buildings featuring in his or corners of things. So they feel like little cows, but then he actually created these. I think he molded them out of clay. Wow. So, and the really more cool. time you spend on them, the more we get to know them. But I love the abstracted ones. And then this is a set. I think this is from work that was done in Spain. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> she had an exhibition in Spain and also yeah. did work you while she was there. Spain. And that yeah. flare is there. He said he's a big fan of Goya. And then I love this one that he was, um, he was said he was wearing a mask and was part of a short film, and this is a still from that film, but that, I would not have known that that was a mask, no. because it's a river cost, so we, yeah. you know, so you definitely see that in Spanish influence. And yeah. Very cool. Yeah, it's so very cool. cool. So I feel exceptionally honored that he's given me the privilege of being able to show these, because I'm a ginormous fan, and he's leaning yeah. out on a couple of pieces of his, which I can show you later, too. I love that they're on the little plaques, though, because they are really, like, tempting to pick up. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like they're glazed too, so you don't like yeah. too much of like, hold on too much. Yep. So, um, um, yeah. I love seeing them all together too. Yeah. Some are, I mean, they have such different, I don't know, subjects, each one of them, but all together, it all just kind of makes sense. <laughs> yeah. it's so great. <laughs> and the colors, and it's really cool. Yeah. Awesome. And it's fun because everyone gets that opportunity to choose the one that speaks mm -hmm. to them. Right. And they can, like, because we created a viewing room online so people can go in there and look, oh, say, hey, it's cool online. It's just never all my attack with a, um, wow. a, a nifty online um, viewing room. I didn't say anything in that last sentence, by the way. This is Adrian Leonard Brooks. He's out of Texas. I saw his work because he showed at a gallery now defunct. I think she's doing more private consulting, but um, I worked with her, so I was sort of what I was thinking of the gallery. Who do I want to show? For some reason, I went to her gallery when I saw Adrian's work. I was just like, stop it. Hmm. I think these are so exquisite. There's something like so beautiful. Like, I always think old photographs have such a sense of longing and nostalgia in them. And he feels as if when he chooses these cabinet cards, and I found them cabinet cards, those are the photograph mounted on cardboard so that they can be displayed. So that, you know, like the 1870s when mm -hmm. this came about, so that they can be displayed in a cabinet. Um, so he feels as if he's these, otherwise they would be discarded images, and he brings new life and new honor to them by painting them. It's called the War Paint series. So I also like that. So it's like, sort of, you know, in terms of the story that. You know, in order to fight the good fight, there needs to be a boy. You know, mm -hmm. so I love the fact that he's honoring these women again by giving them this delicacy of this this paint with the hands and the faces. Mm -hmm. It's just I think these are extraordinary. At first we're like, hey, hey who was the nice lady? And then we I've just fallen in love with the partnership of these two pieces like that. The mm -hmm. fact that she's holding the universe. So I love the femininity of these, the mystery of these, the fact that, you know, in a, the very sincere honoring of all these women. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love the mix of, I mean, there's such strength in each one, yeah. but it's such delicate detail. Yeah, too. I, I, I typed in a blog thing for him and kind of, I said, there is such a, you know, elegant delicacy to it, but there's also yeah. the strength that you're bringing out in mm -hmm. all of these women, you know, to, it's not a dichotomy, it's more like that. How do those go together? As they do in real life. Yeah. I mean, yes. just, so, and without getting too deep, but to me, I do feel like you need to be a warrior in order, you know, to, to do transformation because it's scary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's a strip away step. Yeah, so. The pairing of the super saturated yeah. color story was really nice with that. Yeah. They're all like sepia or that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. one tone. And that's new for him to incorporate these colors. They usually, you know, were predominantly this sort of sepia monotone, but then this is the intensity, his color palette. He does beautiful illustrations and they sort of like denote sort of mystery, the sublime, a 
the reverence for spirituality and connectivity. Wow. Yeah, that's how he chooses the color palette? Well, that's his, his, he has sort of two forms of work. Like he does sort of illustration, uh, figurative illustration. Mm -hmm. We call him, oh goodness gracious, I'm not going to remember it. I read it in an article about him. But that illustrative work, this is the palette when he does wow. that. So they interview some of the themes. Well, the themes we have for him. Mm -hmm. Aren't those beautiful? Uh, the hands are beautiful, mm -hmm. sort of reminds me of like Athena. Mm -hmm. um, this is Jennifer oh, Vanderpool. Jennifer, I know, are these, are these fabulous? Want all, all of this here. Yes. Okay. So, Jennifer, this is called the Modern Series. So, it's sort of exploring cities that were built around a particular kind of industry, the lore of that industry, the promises of that industry the glamour, the perfect home. So these are taken from tourist magazines and um, uh, home design magazines, postcards, so it's sort of that evocative come hither to them. Mm -hmm. But then she, this, usually when she does events like this, there'll be sort of large scale in the backdrop or more didactic, more sort of academic presentation, where she's interviewing, for instance, like steel workers in a particular you know part of the country, like what happened at the beginning of the steel industry boom, and then how did it dissipated, how did that sort of fall out, mm -hmm. affect the town, affect the people, affect the lifestyle. So she'll usually do, and she'll do documentary films on that. So these touch on all of them. She's really good at this just perfect balance of sort of th those juxtapositions. Right. Um, and then she'll always have this sort of decorative design and patterning in the background. So this is, as I said, normally she had to show in Ecuador right now. There are these large scale prints. God, that's incredible. Yeah, because um, she they're usually pretty, you know, um, immersive installation based. So these would be large scale. As I said, it was a backdrop. So this is, I want to say, it's the first time she did these prints, but it's not the first time she did these prints. I think she put them on aluminum, but we decided to print them on paper for this exhibition. So it's a newer expression for her to do in this format, but I think it's really successful. Mm -hmm. And then she yeah. also has this super but it's by using the exam glass, it allows you to see sort of all the pixels of the newspaper and the newsprint that it's taken from. So, and then again, this sort of this is the ideal home, right. but then there's something slightly foreboding, but then come hither about it. And I always yeah. say Jennifer's work always has that element of push, delicate balance between push and pull. Mm -hmm. She calls these photographic interventions. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Intervention is, is uh, definitely in her oeuvre. Mm. Yeah. She's done performance art, she's done sort of physical on the street, and she's done performing things within the context of her exhibitions. Jen from the way back with Jen. I'm a big fan of hers. Wow, well, they're so great. I mean, I can only imagine what they look like large scale. Yeah. Just so cool. You just want to dive right in. Yeah. But again, that's she a lot of her work is like the that how they come hither from mm -hmm. the right. in a sense you're sort of oh I'm attracted to it, but you're also being manipulated by mm -hmm. it too. You know, she's allowing you to have your viewpoint, but she's also denoting one at the same time. This is Krista Slavanos. Um, she her parents were migrants from Latvia and Lithuania. They came here after World War II, so the idea that they felt perhaps they'd never be able to go home, or felt that they would never be able to go home. So photographs of home were very precious to them. And the idea of home was very fluid, and having to leave a home, your cultural identity, and to re-establish yourself in a new world as migrants. So this is called the Migrant Series, so it's homage mm. to that. And over the period of 10 years, she documented three places she lived, Philadelphia, Chicago, and New York. And then with the, that photographic, um, you know, uh, documenting that she would then re make composites of all three places in these wow. sort of beautifully wow. distilled mm -hmm. works. And I think she's just really cool. interesting. Yeah. And simplified shapes, but they're, mm -hmm. and they feel like little quiet poems, but there's an intensity to them too, because it, like home is such a charged issue. Mm -hmm. Idea of home, feeling at home, being a place where you can come home to. So, I think the positioning of them is yeah. really interesting too. Just not something and like just it. enough, and just it's not just a mix of those right. places or 
cities are buildings that are how they're positioned. Mm -hmm. And then suburban and suburban mm -hmm. are like yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And I had left for work from afar for years. Like I, like I was very fortunate to gather that the call to artists that approach that yes. Ooh, that was cool. Um, and so I had been following her work for years and years and always was attracted to it. So when I came up with this concept, um, I thought that it was, I, I really loved the relationship between Vanderpool mm -hmm. and Krista's work without it's not, it's without it's being spot on and on the nose about that relationship. So I was, I'm excited to show them together. Yeah. And the work is, some of their work is real obvious companions. These, I think, are in, Treating enough so that they share a dialogue mm -hmm. without it being sort of clear. obvious. Yeah, right. yeah, it's not given to you right away, right. but yeah, you can see some common denominator there. Yeah, and again, you know, it's sort of the or the realities. I mean, it's it's, it's just such an interesting I think, subject matter, and mm -hmm. I'm really glad that people are digging on it because it's you know I think it's resonating. Yeah. For sure. I think this is all from her. I know, right? I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's perfect. So this is Paulina wow. Neff, who is a local artist. She's over in Georgetown Faux Gallery. Faux Gallery, she's her studio there. And she did this, you know, these vignettes, this installation, which we'll talk about. Oh, really? But it's sort of like there's a wheelhouse here, like collage, assemblage, the idea of nostalgia and longing. Mm -hmm. And then it's sort of quiet poetry of distillation of stories that I really, I just absolutely love. So her studio looks like that. So I go over there and my brain stops functioning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I, you know, so I make really weird decisions for years. Like, I'm going to take these for the show. I don't know what I'm doing. You know, so like wow. But I don't know how you ever decide. Well, Kay and I, and Kay came with me and we're going through, and then she very kindly set up the vignettes because we knew we were going to be doing this niche market installation. And I think having Kay there to sort of, you know, keep me from like, Losing my my cell phone. Seriously, I'm like I don't know what I'm doing with my cell phone. Um, but we found these, and these were created on a um, residency she did residency she did in France. Hmm. So this one's called Brother and Sister. This one is called Home. The floor from home. The floor oh. from home. And that's literally a piece really? of the floor from home. Really? She has, mm -hmm. And then she has, but look, it's like carpeting. <laughs> So we have, a, we have a couple of her pieces that are from, literally from the home that she grew up in. But I just thought that these were just so beautiful, so mm -hmm. mysterious. She showed so much reserve in terms of, you know, just, just the right amount of balance, right. just the right amount of, you know, story. And I love that weather quality that they have. I, I'm just, I love these. This little illustration. Yeah. Because yeah. 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 we don't know that. Like if you go to grandma's, you know, grandma's stuff, and you like. I, I remember when I was going through my grandparents' things and my parents' things, I would find drawings that my father had done. Really? Like, he would always draw like drunk guys burping when he was a little kid. I don't know, any really? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's sort of you understand, and I think it's also so charged that that was a moment to someone that may mm -hmm. no longer be with us, and that's like the old photographs. That sense to me is just like the cabinet cards, all of that. Right. Just think about how much energy we all have standing here and all the busy thoughts that we have mm -hmm. and our lives going this way, this way. And then absent of that person, these are just the memories of it. And so it's, you know, this is a way of honoring, bringing new story to them. Yeah. Yeah, really highlighting that moment. That yeah. might just be a, a nothing moment, you know, somebody doodling or something, yeah. but wait, you know, just right. take a minute and bring that. Back to life. And also, too, the idea of starting, you know, as child. It's weird when we look at pictures of ourselves as children, and then, you know, like that small thing was that quiet thing was me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, go on. Yeah. But, you know, the starting a family, the idea of growing a family and making a home. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, these are also. And these are family right? maps of townships in mm -hmm. Washington. Little oh, hand drawn maps. And then she. Oh. These are postage stamps oh, that she's brushed out, which I think are, you know, because it's interesting. Yes. This medium, not that other ones aren't like that, but I love this medium because it's the tactility of it. And then you make this creation, you step back for a minute, tells you the story that you were creating, not dictating it, mm -hmm. but it's sort of the idea of postage and communication, and then how you know cities grew up and townships grew up, and 
I know, I, I, I love deconstructing them, that's why I think hmm. assemblage and collage is really potent that way. Yeah. Oh. Yep. So, I know. And her stuff breaks my brain. Oh my These are from her catalog of imaginary beings, and she has oh. over 400 or so imaginary beings. Really? Yes. And they are all equally as astonishing. It's like, talk about my brain shutting down. First of all, when I had a website up for the first two weeks that I was looking at her work, I just kept saying the F word. Yeah. And then, you know, <laughs> but, um, so they were just, they're these sort of little surreal composites, but she's just so good at the nuances. You know, like the crook of a hand. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they'll be distilled from time and place, other times there's some contemporary objects in them, but they're always very fanciful, very joyful, and she's incorporating sometimes there's like urban backgrounds, sometimes there's sculptural backgrounds. So it really covers the gamut in terms of you know, what she's incorporating with the individual figures. Sometimes the figures will be made of cars. Sometimes they'll be made of mm. like like the woman in a dress and her her skirt and at the end of her skirt, the hem of it is a wall that has graffiti maybe wow. from you know the East, the German wall. These are crystals, right? These are all crystals. And the reason I chose these is funny because I was getting to know her and then I said, I have this show, I have this idea and and she goes, well, tell me about it. You know, just sort of interested in what the premise is. And I'm like, oh, man. So I did, 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 and wrote something, too, which I was pretty pleased with. And she wrote back, she said, I don't know how I fit in, but I'm, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> but, but to me, like, when one does that cliff dive, mm -hmm. you're, and we'll talk about Maka's work, you know, you've got to deal with the good, you've got to deal with the bad, you've got to deal with all of that. But doing that, I call it cliff diving and the dark night of the soul. Like, you get your inner goal, you get your inner crystals, you get your inner jewels. So I don't mean to be so literal in that, but to me, like the process reaps this beautiful material. Yeah. So these are I know. And when she first I, I know, right? Oh my god. And when she when I first had them in the niche market because I've had them since I opened, she said to me, um, she goes, well just pick 12. 10 or no, she said pick 10. Oh, you oh, picked him. Oh, like, oh, like, oh, oh, like at some point I just had to walk away oh, from looking at her. But I make up, I, I compensate for my alleged judicious restraint um, by having more of a finish her. But also this show has a feminine through line. Mm. Mm. You know, it, not intentional, unintentional. It is what it is. Yeah. And uh, so I thought that these were a beautiful addition. And I say this gallery is sort of split in two, like it's the more philosophical, mm -hmm. the, you know, the more nostalgia long, and this is the, the colorful great. Oh god, they're so amazing. I know. Just yeah, they're, they're bonkers good. I love the expression of this. I know. Yeah. But she's just so good at, you know, right. sort of finding sure, yeah. that. And the crook of the feet. I was just gonna say, yep. I love the yep. positioning of yep. all of these feet. It's yep. so yep. perfect. Yep. Like this one. Yep. And your perfect little strappy yep. heels here. You're <laughs> oh. just amazingly structured, not gone in garment. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're just stunning. I love it. Yeah, me too. Um, this is Hey Lady Art Studios. So good. So I think I found her on Instagram. We're doing a virtual um, embroidery class with her, wow. which will be super fun. Mm -hmm. She's a super kick. Everything, you know, the titles are all cheeky. This is essentially like her mother was a seamstress and her mother said, you've got clumsy, awkward fingers, or think that's the story. And she said, you'll never amount to anything when it comes to, you know, doing this delicate work. And she said, oh yeah, watch me. Yes. Give me your, you know, word with that old woman. And taught herself to um, embroider on French, started French knots on YouTube. Really? So she, you know, she just started doing this and was doing it for fun and just wants to put it out in the world. But now she's starting to get, she's out of Bettenville, Arkansas, which actually has, we were able to bond because I spent a lot of time in Bettenville, Arkansas. Oh, wow. A momentary, very good museum there. Um, but she just sort of can't stop creating these. And sometimes, and it's interesting because, you know, some of them are cheeky, like this one's called So Mature. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Um, and it's, but then other ones are just so quiet and exquisite, yeah. like, you just look mm -hmm. at them. Yeah. Oh, so look at her skirt, like, what she's done. But you can see, like, where she's, how she's progressed. And then sometimes they're, you know, mm -hmm. still poignant moments. Sometimes 
Actually, there's one that I'm uh, getting from a friend. It's um, the guy's head is exploding. He's oh, holding yeah. the thing, and it's called. And then he has his wife standing next to him. It's called available. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and these are so cool. Mm -hmm. I know. So some of them are really tender. Yeah. No, no, no. And then there's a couple. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> So she's, you can tell that she, these are joyful. So on the journey, that can be intense, but it's also keeping a sense of humor. I love that. Yeah. I love these. Wow. And then this is Katie McCann. I did find her on Instagram through a thing out of Edinburgh, which is called Februlage. And aside from it's being complicated to say, um, <laughs> is they were just constantly putting out um, for the month of February, collage, 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 collage. Oh, so I found her through that and was quite honored when we initially worked together at first having a when I opened. So she's a British artist. She's out of a British collage artist. She was out of Oakland, California. Hmm. And then this series, For Home and Away, these are all uh, fashioned after British puddings. So the taste, what? the texture, so, so that's from, you know, so there's a little nostalgia for her. Wow. And so she said it's based on these uh, British puddings with a dash of William Morris design. That is so well, they, cool. They do look delicious. That's yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Like mm -hmm. That's That was called Willy Wonka, when they mm -hmm. make the wallpapers flavored. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like juicy. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then she said, and the, the fork and the spoons has a little dash of surrealism. But I love like the Florida oh. City head. And I just, they're so joyful and energetic. Yeah. Gosh, I imagine if you had that in your home, you could look at it. I you could always see something new. Well, the relationship between the birds and yeah. Um, yeah. the peach rolls. Yeah. Like, yeah. And then I love oh. the birds on it right there. Yeah. And it's really been like it's been really lovely to share the show, share these artists with people. Just their responses. People say I get so bored in galleries, and I really enjoyed every moment in here. Yeah. I think that's hard, you know, a high compliment to the artist. So I'm, I love all the dialogues. I love all you know everything that's being expressed here. Yeah, these ones are fun because you want to get it. Yeah, I want to see each part, even on the sides. I yeah. love it. Oh, and so she good. also, we have a niche market. She was doing 3D collages, and I thought, well, it's everything 3D, but when I got them, they're actually raised and they're on book covers. Oh. And then she did 100 Days, 100 Collages, um, and that was. Um, 100 Days Hundred Collages, sorry, my brain split for a minute. Um, they're all fashioned after a hair duck color names. Really? Oh my god, that's so cool. <laughs> and those are all in cool book paper. Mm -hmm. um, she's local, these are her double series, and her thought is that you've got good, you've got bad enough, and so you got to reconcile that. you got to own it, that's why I say, when you own your crappiness, <laughs> and you get, you know, you can matriculate it in, sort of, I always say it's like that pretty stasis between things that are normally at odds. So she's acknowledging both sides, and then also to the outfits, roles, identities, how we portray ourselves to the world. Are we comfortable in them? Uncomfortable in them? Mm -hmm. How does it fit? Et cetera, et cetera. So the devil in the lace dress, I thought there was one that had a bunch of devil in negligee. It was really cute. Oh, wow. And it wasn't available, and then I, the person who owns that came here, and she goes, I have that, and I'm like, I want to get that one. Wow. <laughs> This is spring devil, uh, business casual, and with a blue loose oh, yeah. yeah, they're just so charming. They She's going to be at our talk here Thursday at noon. That's so cool. Yeah. I love the old timey, almost paper doll yeah. yes. too. Mm -hmm. like, so, the like, modern print, she collages things on there, she stamps things on. So, yeah. They're just charming. Mm hmm. I particularly like this one because I feel like the breakfast table is my favorite spot in the house and especially oh, yeah. in the home. That's where you like start your day and just a little scene of the comfy and the weather game. Okay. I just think it's really cute. <laughs> it's like very dramatic, but then it has this really quiet little home situation. Yeah. I like the little lady. <laughs> 
I love this one. <laughs> I want it to live in this one, and I want it the size of a wall. And I love every aspect of it. Like you can just hear what's going on in this pool. I bet they're talking about some cocktails. I guess they make balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or who makes what? Well, I, <laughs> um, I love the architecture, the palm trees, and of course the fashions. All of it. So I love this one. I can't, I mean, these two right here, I love so much. I feel like the whole thing is pulled together by the positioning of the feet and what shoes they're wearing. And I want to see both these things walking down a runway. Um, and I love it. I, I mean, good Lord. I mean, you can just see that as a gown. It's phenomenal, and, but yet it's rock. It's so great. Um, okay. Aww, you can touch the it. The sweetest thing. It's like this very <laughs> sweet, stoic, old-timey photo of these two people, but with that delicate embroidery of a heart. Wow, I love it.